Hello everyone and welcome back to Forensic Extract and in previous two videos we have discussed about general toxicology as well as the general management guidelines in case of any poisoning. So we all know that how to diagnose a poisoning on antimortem on the basis of sign and symptoms, on the basis of general physical examination and basis of laboratory investigations. We are able to find out that what type of poisoning it is but it is also important to diagnose a poisoning on post-mortem examination on post-mortem examination so how to diagnose a poisoning during post-mortem examination is also important so we can diagnose by various Investigations as well as the common findings we note while doing post-mortem. So first is the identification of smell that is coming from the body. Then second is the color of post-mortem lividity, color of post-mortem lividity. And the third thing that is the chemical analysis, chemical analysis of viscera. So the viscera we have preserved during, during post-mortem will send that viscera for chemical analysis so that we can diagnose a poisoning after chemical and chemically analyzing that viscera. Now the first is the smell that is also important for various UG as well as PG and the various entrance examination at what type of smell is uh, given by uh, certain poisonous substances like first is the garlic odor garlic odor it is a odor given by arsenic phosphorus aluminum phosphide and organophosphorus compound so these are the compounds which are responsible for garlicky odor then the fruity odor, fruity odor it is the odor of alcohol and acetone and nail polish remover. This is fruity odor. Then the third is the smell like rotten egg, rotten egg smell by H2S and Merceptans, Merceptans and N acetyl 16. So this is the smell uh, of H2S, Merceptans and N acetyl 16, smell of rotten egg. Then the smell like bitter bitter almond so bitter almond oil like smell comes from hydrocyanic acid or the simply cyanide so bitter almond like smell is of cyanide then the smell of fishy or decaying fish odor or musty odor musty odor it is the smell of zinc phosphide and aluminum phosphide so decaying fish and musty odor comes from zinc phosphide and aluminum phosphide then the smell like shoe polish shoe polish like smell comes from nitrobenzene compounds and the smell of disinfectant this in Factant like smell comes from phenol and chrysol. Now the kerosene like smell comes from organophosphorus compounds because these compounds are dissolved in the kerosene for, uh, before use. So that's why kerosene like smell and moth bowl, moth bowl like smell come from naphthalene balls and camphor. 
and peer like smell peer like smell or acrid peer like smell comes from chloral hydrate and peraldehyde peraldehyde chloral hydrate gives smell like acrid peer so these are few examples of various poisonous substances which give certain uh, smell so that we can identify on postmortem examination but the point to remember while doing postmortem is the first to open the cranial cavity is first to open then uh, the abdominal cavity because if we will open abdominal cavity first then the gases emitting from the abdominal cavity will mask the smell of any poisonous substance so we are not able to detect the smell so that's why we have to open cranial cavity first now the second important finding that is the color of postmortem lividity color of pml so postmortem lividity is the uh, color change after death that is also known as hypostasis or sagillation now there are different colors also of postmortem lividity so we will cover few examples like the important mcq as well as the commonly asked question is the cherry red cherry red color of postmortem lividity is seen on carbon monoxide poisoning then the bright red bright bright red color of postmortem lividity is seen in cyanide poisoning and sometimes in case of refrigerated bodies if body is refrigerated for longer period of time then the color of postmortem lividity will be bright red because it will the hypothermia will decrease the oxygen dissociation from hemoglobin so that's why the color of lividity is bright red now the color of lividity is of chocolate color chocolate color lividity is seen in aniline dyes aniline dyes nitrates nitrates and the potassium chloride so these kind of chocolate color of lividity is due to formation of meth hemoglobin meth hemoglobin in these poisonous substances now the bluish green bluish green color of lividity is seen in h2s poisoning and black color lividity black color of lividity is seen in opium poisoning and dark brown dark brown or yellow color of lividity is seen in poisoning by phosphorus so these are few examples of change in postmortem lividity the color of postmortem lividity in various types of poisoning so that we can get a rough idea about the type of poisoning and the nature of poisonous substance now we'll cover the chemical analysis of viscera so after completing or after doing postmortem we'll go for preservation of viscera if we are having any doubt during postmortem whether due to smell or whether due to postmortem lividity or whether due to the circumstantial evidences or the general history as given by io and as well as the attendants so we will go for preservation of viscera so what all organs or the fluid that we will preserve during postmortem that is first is the stomach whole stomach with its content with its contents and the part of part of small intestine part of small intestine then the part of liver with gallbladder then the half of each kidneys half of each kidneys then the 
blood and urine so in routine visra this is routine visra we will preserve these stomach with its content then part of small intestine then liver with gallbladder and half of each kidney and blood and urine so the best sample the best sample in the visceral chemical uh, analysis is the blood because blood gives qualitative qualitative as well as quantitative analysis qualitative as well as quantitative analysis of any chemical substance so that's why blood is the best specimen now the how to preserve these uh, viscera usually we will preserve the viscera in glass containers glass containers with a lid covering the glass container and we will uh, mark with all the details of the de uh, deceased as well as the other related like postmortem number and police station and all now sometimes we have to preserve some specific viscera also like in case of any cardiac poisoning cardiac poisoning we have to preserve heart or in poisoning by uh, some spinal poisonous substance then we have to preserve uh, neurons like spinal cord and brain and poisoning by some heavy metals metals we have to preserve bone hair nail at sample uh, sample for analysis of metals and in case of sub, uh, poisoning by gaseous substance gases so we have to preserve both lungs both lungs after cutting them from hyla and we will preserve them in a nylon bag nylon bag airtight bag so that we can analyze the gas that is entrapped in the nylon bag that can be analyzed in forensic science laboratory for the chemicals then sometimes some poisonous substances are also there which are having secretion in bile so we have to send bile for the analysis of the substance like opium like opium and barbiturates so in opium and barbiturate poisoning we have to preserve bile for chemical analysis also then sometimes the cerebral poisons cerebral poisons we have to preserve brain so these uh, these are specific viscera based on the nature as well as the site of poisonous substance we will uh, take out the specific viscera with routine viscero chemical analysis now the important point that is how to preserve how to preserve means preservatives preservatives so preservatives as a routine the commonly used preservative is the saturated solution of common salt so this is the most commonly used preservative but the best preservative is the rectified rectified spirit so rectified spirit is the best preservative but saturated solution of common salt cannot be used in case of poisoning by corrosives corrosives and poisoning by aconite so these are ex uh, exceptions of uh, use of saturated solution of common salt in the poisoning of corrosives and aconite 
and the rectified spirit cannot be used in the poisoning by alcohol and the phenolic substance and formalin so it is not indicated or contraindicated in the poisoning of alcohol phenol and formalin rectified spirit otherwise overall the rectified spirit is the best uh, the preservative for preserving viscera for chemical analysis so viscera preservation preservation so if someone asks that uh, which is the best preservative to preserve viscera is the rectified spirit but commonly used preservative is the common uh, saturated solution of common salt now we can also uh, preserve viscera for histopathological examination so any kind of histopathological examination if you are sending viscera for any histopathological examination then you have to preserve that viscera in 10 percent for melin solution so this is the solution in which you will preserve viscera in 10 percent for melin solution then sometimes we have to preserve blood and vitreous vitreous and CSF so the best preservative for blood CSF and vitreous is sodium chloride so we will add in 10 ml blood we will add 100 milligram sodium fluoride and 30 milligram potassium oxalate so as we all know the sodium fluoride is the preservative of choice because it inhibits glycolysis glycolysis thus it will not decrease the concentration of alcohol or any other substance in blood but that's why it is the preservative of choice in preservation of blood and potassium oxalate is a anticoagulant anticoagulant so that's why we'll send blood in uh, 100 milligram sodium fluoride with 30 milligram potassium oxalate and the preservative of choice for urine is high mole so urine can be sent with high mole granules so this is all about the diagnosis of any poisoning during post-mortem examination so this is the diagnosis on post-mortem so just to recapitulate on the basis of smell every poisoning having certain smell so it is very specific for those poison, uh, poisonous substance so we can identify then the color of post-mortem lividity then the finally the visceral chemical analysis report so these are the three steps on the basis of which we can diagnose the poisoning on postmortem so thank you guys and please do subscribe forensic extract by pressing the subscribe button over here and please press the bell icon so that you will get uh, timely notifications so thank you and please keep on watching thank you